would love to talk about, you know, the strategies that you all had for really maximizing that buzz. So after these songs started to trend, what were some of those goals that you had? Was it to maybe maximize the listenership, find new listeners, create some sort of super fans potentially? And uh, off the back of that, were those goals really the same in all of these different markets? Or were you thinking of these markets really separately? There were a lot of goals. One of them were just to make sure I was reintroducing Tommy to the global market now that he has so many eyes on him. And I hate that I'm using the word catalog. It's not really catalog, but just like uplifting releases that he's had before and making sure whatever approaches we had here locally were globalized and also made sense relevant in a relevant sense to the relevant cultures internationally, just so people can have more like intentional touch points with the record. Um, and I want to make sure we were converting all the passive listeners that we were getting on this specific song into true fans, because I would hate for them just to fall off off of this one track. Um, and luckily it didn't because he had Devil is a Lie right after. So that propelled Million Dollar Baby into another world too, because Devil is a Lie also went up crazy. But yeah, those were like the key goals making sure that he was like doing intentional touch points on platform like he has such a specific ethos with how he approaches social and just his brand so i wanted to make sure however he wanted to brand himself and how he wanted to communicate to fans were made sense to how he wanted to touch with these platforms so tiktok instagram like official partner like pitchable opportunities and just make sure like we're tastefully promoting his music and not just like dumping everything into the sink yeah like you said not let the song get bigger than the artist i, I love when you said that earlier yeah, for us, uh, everything was going way too fast. So it's like we were trying to cover our bases. Like we found a lot of success off TikTok ads that had the the highest conversion in terms of uh, you know user going to stream. But we were we were just trying to cover every single platform we could. We held out on Spotify products because we kind of wanted to have a um, like a secret card to pull once we like started seeing the the record maybe stabilize, but it kept it kept growing. So at some point, we were just like. We covered every single platform and like we have after i think after two weeks we eventually like used a uh, showcase and spotify marquee but our strategy was obviously like we wanted to we didn't know what what a new listener was or what a like an old listener was and all that chaos of people like streaming you know and so uh, in the beginning we just wanted to capitalize on the moment make sure that we were pushing the record globally and like domestically as well but eventually we were just like, okay, let's see what we can do to like find new listeners. And that's when we like started our marquee campaign. For us, I think like having a team that's ready to pivot, um, AWOL, amazing partners. We work with Stern Management, um, really seeing like, okay, we're having this moment. How do we connect the dots with the UGC content and make sure that it's translating to streaming? And I think like products like Showcase for Campaign Kit is super helpful. You can use a tagline like getting buzz and somehow connect it with what's happening on short form. Um, so I think that's always a key strategy for us, um, especially like getting started. Yeah, and like I think we had a we we had a kind of bespoke strategy for each kind of market that we were seeing, and I mean I, we were identifying like really high performing local UGC, boosting that, um, doing content seeding with local partners, um, uh, doing creator campaigns. I mean we we did you know we did a kind of combination of these three things in fifteen different markets in different ways. Um, you know I mentioned Southeast Asia before, but that was really interesting because we saw. You know, we did content seeding with K-Drama, for example, and we saw, you know, a trend, a, a crush or friend trend as well, which we, you know, we really fueled that as well. Uh, there was another one in Latin America called, uh, called Bitch Face, which was just for Bitch Face uh, in Latin America. Um, and, uh, you know, we did some football content as well in, in, in the UK. Um, and also, I think we were really trying to identify where we were on Spotify charts around the world. So we could see that it was growing through search uh, and it was growing through radio, but we were obviously pitching, you know, the GCP team at AWOL were doing an incredible job, our global team everywhere, um, pitching for more playlists throughout Spotify, which was also pushing us up the Spotify charts in lots of different markets. I think from the Spotify products side, what we found actually was when we were getting close to the top um, of the charts, we would sort of work out what our streaming deficit was in those places. And we found that Spotify advertising was actually effective and really pushing us up a little bit to try and get as many number ones as we could. And Spotify advertising was very, very uh, responsive for us. We'd get it out very, very quickly. We could we could choose our spends and we could, we could be quite pinpoint about who we, we served that to. Uh, and then our showcase came on a, a little bit later when we wanted to kind of widen the listeners. 
Um, but it was really a combination of that. Also getting Joe in market. We also supported with a lot of, uh, you know, traditional media as well. We ran radio campaigns in a lot of places. And obviously Joe leaning in where he could as well, doing promo trips and all of that. It, it all helped. So for, from our perspective and the, the global perspective, it really was a global campaign that touched every department at AWOL. Um, and, you know, it was a real team effort. And ultimately we wanted to get it to Spotify number one global chart. Um, it would already be number one in the viral chart. Um, but yeah, we wanted to get it to number one and I'm happy to say that, you know, uh, the whole team got it there. So very happy. What you saw with uh, all the success you've had, has this changed how you're going to be promoting the artists, other releases or, or upcoming ones? I think, I think so. I think there's always something to consider about um, kind of jumping when virality happens. Um, and it, I think it's important for everyone to realize too, that it doesn't have to happen to a song that's, that's fresh or that you've teased. Like we had this happen to a song that was a couple of years old. So um, it, it just, it has to be that, that perfect storm, that connection that fans are having with the, with the content itself is really important. Yeah. Even I think people on platform seeing the artists engage with their music in an exciting way allows fans on platform to want to engage with it too. And more importantly, listen to the song. So I think with Tommy, he has, we made sure when he did post whenever he wanted to engage on platform, it was true to him and leaning into that. And I think that paid in dividends because the songs grew in the way that it has, but be within that space, we were able to find his core fan base, still build brick by brick and not st skip any steps and make sure we're like focusing on building up his brand and bringing them into his fold. Um, even with like the VHS version, knowing that that was something that they really wanted to do and him being okay with doing something like that. And ultimately just like looking at like the North Star goals and then working all the way backwards to point A and then starting at point A and walking that path. Yeah, I agree with like Sada for us. It's like, I don't know how this is going to affect our strategy other than like we now have a roadmap on like how to achieve this, you know, how to achieve a number one on a hot 100. Like that's something that is new to Empire, you know, like it's something that's new to our team and it's something that we're very proud of. But like, you know, we also work with artists of all sizes now. So we're not deluding ourselves into thinking that we're going to like start advising them into becoming the next Shibuzi or becoming like a superstar from like, like we, we really, believe in like artist development and like being true to the the brands of our artists that they brought to empire you know so it's like we now know we have all the tool set and we have all the knowledge on like how to achieve this but it takes time and we're going to be like you know patient with our artist and developing yeah absolutely nothing's nothing's cookie cutter right can't just copy these things can't believe we're already cruising so far into this. I know we only have about 10 minutes left, so I'm going to uh, jump ahead in my questions here, but really trying to put your finger on like, how am I defining that this is that moment? Is there anything that really stood out? Like one succinct thing that you said, hey, this is this is really happening here. Like, is there a way for maybe, you know, some of the folks listening in to know, hey, I might have something on my hands here that that could take off too, because you're not waiting for this to hit number one before you say, hey, this is going viral. There's a lot along the way. So any maybe moment where you were like, man, we, we really got something here. I think when a week after release, he was number two on the Hot 100. That's when I was like, if Drake and Kendrick were Kumbaya <laughs> that week, he would have had number one. But I think that was when I was like, all right, we 100% have something. And he's since maintained within the top 20 on Hot 100. Yeah. Same with us. Like the minute that we even entered the top 10 that we were part of the conversation, like we we're like, what is going on? Like, this is something that's uh, un like a kind of uncharted territory, but we were rolling with the punches. The fact that we've even, that we're even in this place right now, where we're like, I mean, it, making number one was a big challenge. This year was like a huge year for music. You know, like the amount of uh, hits that have come out and like what we had to compete with is insane. And the fact that we found like this opportunistic lull right now between like uh, not like us going number one and then where we're at now. And like we've maintained, uh, you know, a number one position for 13 weeks now. But it's like this is like I mean, now we know that we're doing something historical. But at the time, just even being part of the Hot 100 was like humbling and a great experience and then like it was huge that was already a, a, a big success even doing a million streams daily the first day that was a huge success for us we were just like this is insane but then like now knowing what we know it's like we're we're constantly pushing and, and believing that we belong into different spaces and and rolling with the punches on behalf of the team i think passing a billion streams you know quite recently was huge you know that's one of our missions here at Able Recordings is to, 
is to get, you know, we've got many, many artists to over a billion streams. So it was really nice to have Joe be one of them and join the club. Um, reaching number one Spotify chart would have been another one. You know, that was probably our mission directive for, for a lot of it. Um, and, it, and it will just, I think, you know, a lot of the time it comes back to the music, you know, Joe is such an incredible musician. He, he created an incredible record and I don't think there are any shortcuts, you know, like he, he's, he's been a musician for so long. He's been grinding and working on his craft um, and that piece of music deserved everything that it got because it was great. I think it also, it's helpful too. It's nice to see when it, it, it was also Joe's like entry into billboard, like hot 100 chart. But I think it's also cool to revisit to Sam's point, a catalog that you're introducing it to a new fan base that maybe heard it for the first time on a viral video. So I think it's cool to connect that and build your, your, uh, your fan base beyond what you can imagine. Yeah, I found all three of these artists. It's pretty incredible that it's not like these were their first tracks that they released. These were all artists working on their craft, making this go on, you know, happen for years. And all that hard work really does start to pay off. And like you said, Sam, it's it's about the music. That that's always really what it is. I had one last question for you all. Uh, a bit more broadly, how have these sorts of trends and trending music overall really reshaped how you think about marketing music uh, in general? I try not to get lazy by it because you can just like you just like, oh, okay, this went viral, like cool, like we're done now. And like that's the goal to just have some sort of like viral moment on the platform. Um, and I feel like hardly do we see viral moments stick, especially when it's not a career artist, because at that point it's it's not truly fruitful in a like momentous, like globalized way, if that makes sense. But I just try and make sure like the flash in the pan moment doesn't like define the artist. And make sure we don't deviate from like the overarching like North Star goals and plans and branding that we want to do for the artists and make sure that like foundation is set and no steps are sk skipped just because you had this moment that happened to you. Because there's still a lot more development that the artist has to go through. Um, yeah, it's like there's a, Tommy could have easily done like a bigger tour this year instead of doing like four underplays this year, but he never had an underplay tour that he headlined himself. It's important that he has that moment. So he knows what those rooms are going to look like for him and how it feels to tour on his own and what finances look like for him as one example. So yeah, I don't want artists to feel like they can skip steps. I think it's important to like build brick by brick. Yeah. And I would say too, like there's no timetable. And I think, um, you know, to your point, like chasing virality will make you go crazy. So it's all about just making sure you're um, developing an artist, making sure that you're thinking of the overall picture, setting goals. Um, and then if it happens, it's awesome, but not to chase it. Yeah. For us, I don't know that like we were already outfitted to like fuel the fire whenever something was happening, you know, like we already had success on like many artists prior to that. But now, like I said earlier, like we know how to build up artists. Now we we have the roadmap to like take them to like the biggest accolades that they can achieve. And so that's, that shaped our, our strategy a little bit differently now, but like we're still using the same strategies, A-B testing like we always do. Yeah, and I would say, yeah, again, like artist development constantly being great partners to artists, the small details really, really matter. Um, and, but knowing that when you do start seeing something organic, making sure that like, we have, I guess, the data and the awareness and be very agile and be looking at things every day to look for those first green shoots of virality to know to be able to jump on when they happen. But again, it's artist development that gets you into that place in the first place. So uh, that's the most important part. Yeah, absolutely. We are always talking about that here at Spotify. The artist development, the, the, the work that goes into it is just so important. Yeah, thank you all for attending. This really was incredible. This was probably our biggest webinar that we've ever had. So uh, thank you all panelists. Absolutely incredible. Love seeing these emojis fly in. Love this excitement. Thanks so much.